Hello, Somerville. Welcome back to another Somerville Neighborhood News Roundup with the Somerville Journal and the one and only Julia Taliesin, the force behind our local newspaper here. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Thank you for that introduction. <laughs> I was feeling it. I was I love feeling it. it. <laughs> um, as always, lots of stuff happening. Um, we are midway through June here, and we have had some wonderful celebrations around pride and celebrating mm -hmm. our LGBTQ plus community. Um, you all have been doing some great reporting on that. Do you want to give a quick recap to start off our segment here? Yes, absolutely. So happy Pride Month, everybody. Yay, it's June and we're, we're halfway through. So Pride Month is almost <laughs> over, alas. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to kind of, you know, we're halfway through. We've had some really great events, but there are also some great events to come. Um, so I know at the beginning of the month, I think right at the end of May, actually, the um, Somerville Media Center and their amazing pop-up Vox Pop partnered with um, Federal Realty Investment Trust at Assembly Row to host kind of a Pride Month launch, a flag raising. Yeah. You had a little ceremony. Yeah. What else happened at that? So they had a, it was the first time um, really kind of putting energy towards celebrating yeah. the Pride um, festivities at Assembly. So they had a cool um, Pride banner unveiled. It was a very, uh, really neat, dramatic experience. But we had Katiana Ballantyne, our city council president, speak, um, as well as um, the Boston Pride uh, president. Um, and uh, the Laura McShane, our LGBTQ liaison here at the city of Somerville, um, and then Vanessa Martinez, who is the one who spearheaded it through Federal Realty. So that was really, that was cool. That was a cool experience. Yeah. Well, I know you guys, you guys have had a silent disco. You just had a movie night, right? Love, yes. Simon. Yes. Yeah, awesome. Yes. Yeah, the, the silent disco was um, a benefit fundraiser for Respond. Yes. Which was mm -hmm. fantastic, well attended. So. Incredible organization, yeah. And the city, of course, hosted a really well attended um, like pride flag raising just at the city hall concourse yeah. outside the high school. Um, Lauren McShane was there. The mayor obviously gave a speech. Um, but there was a student. Um, their name is Bella, I believe. Um, they use they them pronouns. Um, and they are, I think, a senior at the high school now, though right. I could be wrong. Um, but they just they gave really brief remarks. Um, but they had some really cool things to say, which is literally just that the the most important thing to do during Pride Month is to literally just dare to be yourself. That like that is the most radical form of activism that you can do. So if you can't bring yourself to go to a march, if you can't bring yourself to go to a flag raising, be yourself because that is the whole point of this month and of this celebration, um, which I thought was, first of all, super wise. Um, and second of all, just coming from you know such a young human, right. really inspiring. Right. Um, and really, I mean, Pride Month or no Pride Month, that's pretty darn Just awesome be your advice. Authentic self. Yeah. Always exactly. be the best that you can be. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we've had a lot of events, um, but I think there are some cool events to come. I know Porter Square Books is hosting something at the end of the month, um, which is just, a, just over the border in Cambridge, but they're culturally <laughs> in Somerville, I like to say. Um, so, but Somerville Journal has done a, like a roundup of kind of some of the Pride events, and we're trying to update it as people reach out to us. Um, so, check it out. Um, you can look it up on our website. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to kind of congratulate everybody and say thank hey, you Prima. thank you for being out there and for just giving more um, visibility and a platform for obviously um, these events so um, now launching into community mm -hmm. land trust yes um, I had to do a little bit of research just to kind of Me better too. understand what it means and my understanding and please elaborate um, it's a nonprofit or a just a community organization that develops and stores affordable housing, community gardens, civic buildings, commercial spaces, and other community assets on behalf of a community. I know this is like, that's like the larger scope of it. Um, based on what's happening in Somerville, what is the update on those local initiatives sure. happening here? So I, I just first wanna say, I am new to this too. Mm -hmm. So I attended the launch last week. Um, it's newly incorporated. So yes, it has been incorporated as a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Um, it is a community organization. So it's kind of being run currently by volunteers, though eventually the model will include members, mm -hmm. um, more of a kind of traditional kind of board type structure. Um, but I am learning too, and it is it is very, you know, it's in its infancy here. It has a lot of support at the city and community level, but it is just beginning. So I just want to get that out there that the best people to talk to about this right now is not me. It is Ben Ewan Campen, it is Ben Baldwin, the numerous volunteers um, who you can all find on their website. It's Somerville Community Land Trust. Great. So give that a Google and you'll learn more. Um, but basically, 
this is a tool that can be used, as you said, to create many pathways to different, to public land, right. to affordable housing, to civic space, to um, commercial space. But right now, I believe they're prioritizing the use of this tool to create permanent affordable housing in Somerville. Um, so what that would look like is the Community Land Trust as a nonprofit organization would acquire land. They can acquire land through purchasing it just like anyone else. Mm -hmm. um, so you know the first step this whole process is really money. Right. Um, people can donate land. Um, there's you know multiple ways they can acquire land. You know the state, the city can donate land. Mm -hmm. Um, and then they can kind of incorporate it under the land trust. Um, but that's the first step, right? So the first step is money, support from the city to acquire land. So sense. we're we're not even there yet. So this What's is still in the beginning. It's tangible. Precisely. Um, and the goal of that, and this is a very general <laughs> definition of kind of how that can work, is then once that land is purchased, maybe there's a structure on it, maybe they build a structure. Um, but if it's an affordable home, per se, so someone is going to purchase the property. They purchase the structure, but lease the land underneath is the way that it works. So it's a ground lease, but they purchase the structure, which basically allows that person to still have equity in their home, oh, which is one of the, it's one of the worst things about renting, right? Is you never build up equity right. in, in anything. There's no investment. And the way it works is that because it is permanently affordable, it is off the market, you are, building so as the value of your property increases you get to benefit from that property increase and value however you don't sell it for a profit you know okay. you it remains with the community land trust if you want to sell it you have to sell it through the community land trust process either selling it like so the community land trust will work with you right. to find another buyer who buys at that affordable rate and you get to essentially take the value increase but not right. anything extra so it and you know you're what I mean? able to get the like benefit of obviously like the e like the equity precisely. It's like being on like you know maybe your father's credit card and they right. own it, but you get the good yes. credit score. Exactly. <laughs> <the> exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Dad. Um, in college. Yes. <laughs> um, but I think one thing that I really got and what the kind of presenters and volunteers around this really drove home is that this is not just about like land ho housing it is it's about supporting you know low and middle income groups and especially like POC and immigrant communities mm -hmm. but it's also about community mm -hmm. that like the community land trust is a structure it is and if you are part of this whether you're a renter a buyer you commit to being a part of the community you know you maybe use your expertise to help offer workshops, you know, or you attend workshops, you help your neighbors, you participate in the community, which is a lot of people's complaints about kind of how this market has really isolated and alienated people. Like if you're a renter, even if you have 10 neighbors, you know, in the same building, you're still really alone because you're all kind of out for yourself. So part of this model is to bring people back together, to bring back that sense of community. So very general overview. Yeah, Please but go to the experts. Shape, but how this shapes up. But yeah, but learn about it. I mean, this you know this is beginning. You know, this is beginning in our city. So you know, get knowledgeable. Do some research on their website. And also, just a quick point: we are not pioneering this. This happens all over the country. There are some really well-established ones in Roxbury, in Sh in Burlington, Vermont, that have been at it since the 80s, since the 70s, and have hundreds of properties acquired, commercial as well as housing. So we have models, we have leaders to look to. You know, we're not doing this alone. So They're sound examples. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, for us who are trying to learn about it, looking to those can really help get an idea of how this could work and how what this could eventually look like in Somerville. Um, and one cool thing is that it's been shown, you know, in these examples that land trusts who have the support of their cities are much more successful and things get rolling much faster and right. we really have the support of the mayor and of the government in Somerville so this is happening you know what I mean this That's is happening awesome. so I would really you know recommend you know check out our article but please like go to their website you know we'll stay on top of this kind of as it rolls out um, but they have links to all of those other land trusts and get knowledgeable you know about like how this could roll out and what this might be looking like in a couple years right and attend any of the meetings yeah and stuff like exactly that. Mm -hmm.
excellent overview. <laughs> Thanks. That, and we're all learning, and yes. that's and you you definitely um, you know that's good. You're 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 on the right track. <laughs> you're being a journalist, which is right. amazing. Um, Budget season. Yes. So that's occupying, I think, a lot of um, <sighs> time and energy versus every city council working hard. Yes. Um, what is the general overview on that front? Sure. Yes. Yeah. So this has been going strong since early June, mm -hmm. and this is the city council is working, working their butts off for real. So I have not been able to cover all of this. I would be take all of my time. I would have to forget <laughs> about everything else. Um, but I did my best. You know, I attended the mayor's um, budget presentation at the beginning of the month. Um, to kind of just get a sense of where this budget is going. We have, I believe, about a 5.6% increase in the overall budget, and a lot of that increase is going towards um, equity and increased support from like city services. So that's kind of the, the guiding values um, in his new um, proposals to this budget. So, you know, there's, it's spread all over. I know there's a, about a 5% increase in the school budget. Um, there's a whole lot going on. So. In general, that's what's going on, but we have a great article, again, where it goes a little bit more in detail of what exactly the like increases and decreases he mm -hmm. proposed are. And if you check out you know, the city meeting portal, if you're like, what about the you know, Summer Viva Office of Immigration? What's happening to their budget? Mm -hmm. There are great agendas, and you can look and get a, a, you know, a detailed sense of what's going on with that budget. But it's not over yet, you know what I mean? So it's still continuing. Right. Um, there's a public hearing on the budget mm -hmm. Tuesday, the 25th oh goodness what if that's wrong it is the Tuesday at the end of June so that is be there or be square be heard essentially that's when you can if you have an opinion on the budget get your voice heard and they're gonna public be public input opportunity exactly um, so just to put that out there but um, there's been a couple things going on you know so while you know a lot of people are really excited about you know this focus on equity in the budget um, there are also some controversy over kind of just what this budget looks like um, so for the first time in I think over 10 years there are no names included on the official presentation of this budget so before you know if you look at the police department, you know, it would say Captain name, you know what I mean? Captain Erica Jones, for example. Um, and then you would get to see their salary, their base salary, their increases, like their bonuses, like it was all there, you know what I mean? Public servant, public information is like how that thought process went. But this year, the administration is arguing that some employees have felt that that was too much information, that they didn't want you know, their salary information to be public. Um, so this year they presented a budget that had just the position names rather than the employees' names, um, which several city councilors have called out as being really not transparent and have really criticized. Um, mm. And right now, while the city council reviews the budget, I know that the administration has made a copy of the budget with names available to the city council. I believe it's a password protected document um, so that they have the names while they make decisions about this budget. Um, what is the benefit for someone to have access to that information? Like how, sure. how is that so, helpful for someone like you? For someone like me, it's incredibly helpful. Um, it allows me to track, for example, pay and equity, um, not making an accusation of the city at all. but. Um, employee positions are not gendered, for example, so you can't track, you know, what, you know, a woman in one position may be making versus a man. Um, and just have the opportunity to ask the question, not saying that in essence it is, you know, discrimination, right. but right. be able to say, hey, like, I've noticed this trend, and go to the department head and be like, hey, what's going on, and have them offer an explanation. That kind of analysis isn't possible when you don't have names. Yeah. Um, so. Like, you know, you, you can try, you can go to the Somerset office, they have a lot of great statistics, but the kind of independent analysis that I know counselors like JT Scott really like to be able to do, doing their homework when they right. come into these hearings, they're like, hey, we, we need these names, right. you know what I mean? And so does the public, they deserve these. Um, so that's kind of ongoing because the budget hearings are not over. I'm not entirely sure where that will go, um, but definitely stay tuned. Um, we'll be taking a look at that as that progresses. Um, but, you know, they haven't voted on the budget yet. Um, and one other kind of area of controversy that I just wanted to highlight was um, we've been reporting on animal control for about six months now. Um, there was some controversy back in January when the city received some complaints from a nonprofit organization about a particular employee, Michael Lapiana. Um, and 
he was put up for reappointment even after the complaints were sent in and a lot of people felt hey like shouldn't you be investigating these you know what i mean and in february the city actually withdrew the candidates not from consideration but from before the city council for approval they won't confirm or deny whether an investigation is being conducted as this is a matter of personnel yeah. um, but the controversy that's going on right now is as the animal control budget is being reviewed counselors are saying hey it's been six months we need information are you putting him forward is there investigation you can and you can do this in executive session but we need information and Ben Yuen Camp and I know went on record saying that he would move to cut funding for the position right now we have two control officers and he okay. said he would move to cut funding for the position one position if the city did not come forward with some information and soon um, so we've been following up on that um, it's just kind of you know confusing well, a lot of people are wondering you know why is this taking so long right. um, because it is mandated and the city has gone on record confirming this that the position go before the city council annually for reappointment mm -hmm. um, so that has to happen at some point here we are in june halfway through the year um, so people are kind of starting to question that so that's, that's follow up on exactly that's <laughs> one more thing um, but we'll be covering the public hearing in a couple weeks so keep an eye out for that and uh yeah that's where we're at right okay. now Whew. thank you mm -hmm. thank you for that and then moving towards the end here um Union Square, US2 um, planning board meetings. Yes, brief update because, lordy, you gotta just you gotta just read the read the minutes. You know, go to the meetings because there's a lot going on. Um, most recently, the last couple meetings um, at near the beginning of June. Um, US2 or the city presented a parking study on the feasibility of underground parking, which was a big thing, and essentially at this point it has been decided that that is not possible. So that's kind of a new development that's been going on. Last week US2 presented their kind of newest design plan for this block that's kind of right behind us. Um, and you know, a detailed design of kind of what the streetscape would look like, how they've been partnering with the GLX team on what the station would look like, um, how they've, I think um, they've committed to build an elevator. That was a real concern for people that GLX was saying they wouldn't build an elevator, which would seriously limit access um, for anyone differently abled or in a wheelchair. Um, so they've been doing some great things. However, the planning board is still not totally on board. Um, with all of their designs, which came up at the meeting last week. Um, they're questioning the placement of some of their public space near the roads. They're saying this is too close to the tracks. People aren't going to want to be sitting there. Um, so I, I really don't know. Like having been to these meetings and you know heard all of this, um, I'm, I'm really not sure what's going to happen, you know what I mean? Um, when they're going to get this project started and get this design approved, it's, it's really still up in the air. And on that note, there's a public hearing tomorrow night, um, June 20th, at the Lowell Street VNA um, on that presentation. Um, so they, they held public co um, comment last week to open it up this week, knowing that they could kind of have a longer right. period of comment. Um, so they anticipate a lot of people coming and sharing their opinion. Um, so I, I don't know, you know, I know that they're waiting to hear public comment. Um, they're going to see what they hear from the public on in terms of ideas and feedback. And um, I know that the community benefits agreement with US2 and the Union Square Neighborhoods Council is still being discussed. It's kind of on its way, they have both said, but it's, mm -hmm. it's still being discussed. So this project is still very much so in process. Cases. Yes. Um, so I just wanted to give kind of a brief update yeah. on that, but keep an eye out. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so much to follow. Yeah. Um, and then lastly, in terms of kind of like looking ahead and in, in mm. future topics that you're looking at, um, you had mentioned cannabis as, as one and then also the immigrant communities. Yes. Thank you so much. So yeah. I like to kind of just, you know, this is such an awesome opportunity to talk to the community about like what I want to learn more about. Because mm -hmm. like I said, you know, I may be a powerhouse, but I'm just one powerhouse I know. and the city really deserves more than that and um, I'm doing my best obviously but I there are so many things I don't know and the only way I can know is if you bring it to me you know what I mean if the city brings it to me mm -hmm. so one issue that I really want to be learning more about is cannabis licensing and the process around it so this has been approved for a while now and retail you know layout is not happening yet you know what I mean it's not being it's not really 
happening on the streets. We're not seeing places opening, even though this was approved overwhelmingly by the voters. And activists are starting to get a little bit antsy. Um, so I just want to hear from the community. Like, if you're an applicant and you've sent an application, when did you send it in? How is the process going? Are you an economic empowerment applicant? How is that process different for you? Where are you looking to open a space? I, I think that if we start having the conversations around like who is applying and what this might start to look like in Somerville, this might facilitate some of the discussion around it. Um, and I just want to learn more. Yeah. Like, wh why are you looking to open a business? You know what I mean? Right. How do you feel equipped? You know what I mean? If you're a person of color, how have you felt empowered to like get into this business? You know what I mean? So I just want to learn more. So if you're an activist, if you're an applicant, um, if you're against it, you know what I mean? If you're trying to slow down the process, let me know why. You know what I mean? I, I'm really looking to do more reporting on this issue. I know other kind of publications across the city have been, and the Boston Globe has dedicated a whole unit to this because it's so complicated. Yeah. And Somerville has a lot going on too. So bring it to my attention, please. That's great. Yeah, so that's one thing. And then the other thing is just, it's been an ongoing mission since I started in this position in um, October. but. It is really important to me that this paper serve more than just white middle class Somerville. Um, I, I, you know, I don't look it, but I am Latina, and I really think that you know this paper is not doing its job if it is not serving and representing our immigrant communities, our POC communities, our just lower income communities, and. Part of that is, you know, a lot of our immigrant communities, they speak Portuguese, they speak Spanish. I speak <clears throat> terrible Spanish, but I am trying. Um, but I really, I've been trying to put some effort into reporting on immigrant-owned businesses and working with the Welcome Project to identify places that deserve more reporting, like the education of black and brown students in our schools and how that education is comparing to the white students in our schools. And I want to know more from you about how I can represent you and how I can report on things that matter to you. Um, so I am doing my best to, you know, get in there myself. But email me, you know, call me. I, I want to know how I can do better. Um, so that's the other thing. <laughs> so <laughs> those are my my um, I hope pleas you get to the community with all of this me too. Um, <laughs> outreach stuff. Yeah. But this is this is great. Julia, thank you. Thank you so much, as always. And thank you all out there for um, taking the time and to get informed on all of the many things that are happening here in <laughs> Somerville. I know this is just a targeted list. Indeed. For more stuff that you are working on, obviously, on your website, check that out. Um, in the meantime, uh, stay informed, stay connected, and stay engaged. And we will see you soon. Bye-bye.